What's going on everyone? We have a very important filing to talk about out of the NSCC, National Securities Clearing Corporation. This is in regards to the just approved and implemented SFT service. We have an amendment to the excess capital premium charge. Let's go ahead and get into it. Now, if you've forgotten, the NSCC SFT service is a very important filing that is going to basically be separating encumbered assets from unencumbered assets that um, are in the process of transitioning from LIBOR to SOFR for the NSFR net stable funding ratio from Title 12 the, that all those changes came out last year around the 4th of July. So this is a amendment to that SFT service and the primary reason for this service other than what I just mentioned is to facilitate the financing of fail to delivers and short positions which is how SFTs are often used as far as a, from a financial standpoint. So this one here, again, it's to modify by amendment number one to revise the excess capital premium charge. This was filed June 2nd. It's scheduled to be published on the Fed Register tomorrow, uh, the 8th, and we will get into it here. Now, two other important notes real quick before I get into, into this is fire sale prevention, which is the rapid selling of assets because uh, when uh, defaulting members have uh, capital they need to make up what they have to do in most cases is sell off assets and when a lot, a lot of different institutional firms do this at the same time because of giant unwinding of collateral positions it creates what's called fire sale and the SFT is specifically designed to mitigate that and the second thing it's specifically um, designed to mitigate is liquidity drain so those are the two primary functions the main reason it's used is to finance FTDs and shorts. Now, the purpose of this amendment. NSCC is proposing to modify the ECP charge, which is the excess capital premium charge referred to, which is a component of its clearing fund that NSCC may impose on a member when a portion of that member's required fund deposit, defined in the rules as the calculated amount, exceeds its applicable capital amounts by 1.0, defined in the rules as the excess capital ratio. Now, the proposed changes would revise the ECP charge by enhancing the methodology for calculating the charge to, number one, compare a member's applicable capital amounts with the amount it contributes to the clearing fund that represents its volatility charge. Number two, for members that are broker-dealers use net capital amounts rather than excess net capital amounts in the calculation of the ECP charge. And for all other members, use equity capital in the calculation of the ECP charge. And lastly, establish a cap of 2.0 for the excess capital ratio that is used in calculating a member's ECP charge. Now, the proposed change would also improve the transparency of the rules regarding the ECP charge by number one, clarifying the capital amounts that are used in the calculation of the charge by introducing new defined terms. Number two, removing NSCC's discretion to waive or reduce the charge. And three, providing that NSCC may calculate the charge based on updated capital information as described in greater detail below. Now, this is a little back backstory on the overview of the required fund deposit and NSCC's clearing fund. So as part of its risk market risk management strategy, NSCC manages its credit risk exposure to members by determining the appropriate required fund deposits to the clearing fund and monitoring its sufficiency as provided for in the rules. The required fund deposit serves as each member's margin. The objective of a member's fund deposit is to mitigate potential losses to NSCC associated with liquidating a member's portfolio in the event NSCC ceases to act for that member, here and referred to as a default, um, and the aggregate of all members required fund deposits is the clearing fund of NSCC. So if you take everyone's uh, required fund deposit, put it together, that is the clearing fund of NSCC. Basically, every institution contributes their own part based on their own metrics and ratios. Now, the excess capital premium charge. Similarly, the ECP charge is a component of the clearing fund that is designed to mitigate the heightened default risk a member could pose to NSCC if it operates with lower capital levels relative to its margin requirements. Each business day, NSCC determines if a member may be subject to the EZP charge by first determining its calculated amount. The calculated amount is a portion of the member's required fund deposit 
designed to represent its margin requirements to NSCC. A member's calculated amount is calculated as its required fund deposit excluding any applicable special charge, margin requirement differential charge, covering component charge, or margin liquidity adjustment charge, plus any additional amounts the member is required to deposit to the clearing fund, either due to being placed on the watch list or pursuant to Rule 15, which is entitled Assurances of Financial Responsibility and Operational Capability of the Rules. Now, NSCC recently reviewed the effectiveness of the ECP charge to identify ways NSCC could enhance both the calculation of the charge and the disclosures regarding the charge and the rules. In connection with this review, NSCC discussed the ECP charge and its proposed enhancements with members, NSCC management, and NSCC supervisors at the commission. As a result of this review, NSCC is proposing to make several enhancements to the ECP charge as described below. I'm not going to read all of this. We're going to go over the most important parts, but if you want to take a look at the, at the whole filing, I'll link it below. So as far as the enhancements, NSCC is proposing to replace the calculated amount with the amount collected as that member's volatility component as determined pursuant to sections IA, 1AI, paragraph 3, and 2AI, paragraph 3, of procedures XV of the rules, or 15. Now, super note 20 here, this is very critical to pay attention to because this is, uh, you know, involves that area of information that you've been getting incorrect information from. So the volatility component is designed to capture the market price risk associated with each member's portfolio at a 99th percentile level of confidence. NSCC has two methodologies, this is the important part, for calculating the volatility component. A model-based volatility at risk or VAR charge and a haircut-based calculation for certain positions that are excluded from the VAR charge. So again, a lot of hype about haircuts lately. This is the filing that you know what you've been told is wrong because a haircut-based calculation for this reason is only included when a VAR is not. Now the charge that is applied to a member's required fund deposit with respect to the volatility component is referred to as the volatility charge and is the sum of the applicable VAR charge and the haircut-based calculation. Amounts calculated pursuant to sections IA1, AIV, and 2AIV of Procedure 15 with respect to long positions and net unsettled positions and family-issued securities are designed to address wrong-way risk presented by these positions, not volatility risks, and as such are not part of a member's volatility charge. Now, currently, determining a member's calculated amount requires a more uh, complicated calculation as it uses a member's required fund deposit, excludes certain components, and includes other deposits. The proposal would simplify this calculation significantly by using only the volatility component, meaning if they're only using the volatility component, they're not even uh, taken into consideration the haircut component. So, haircuts, nothing to see here folks, move on. Now, one of the tools NSCC provides to its members is a calculator, <laughs> that's cute, that allows them to determine their potential volatility charge based on trading activity. Therefore, this proposed change would make the calculation of the ECP charge both clearer and more predictable for members. Now section three here says use net capital for broker dealer members and equity capital for all other members in the calculation of the ECP charge. Now in the calculation of the charge, NSCC is proposing to use net capital rather than excess net capital for members that are broker dealers and equity capital for all other members. As described in greater detail below, in connection with this proposed changes, NSCC would also improve the transparency of the rules by adopting definitions of net capital and equity capital. Members, I'll have these two new definitions in the dictionary in the Discord after this video. Now, also, NSCC believes that the net capital rule is an effective process of separating, this is what I meant by encumbered and unencumbered assets at the beginning of this video, separating liquid and illiquid assets and computing a broker dealer's regulatory net capital that should replace NSCC's existing practice of using excess net capital 
in the calculation of the ECP charge. Now, again, that's basically the gist of it. The biggest thing to take away from this filing is they're not using the haircut component to come up with this charge. Now, other quick notes in here, you have, they're going to establish a cap for the excess capital ratio, which is that 2.0 number that was mentioned at the beginning. It goes from 1.0 to 2.0. They're going to improve transparency regarding the ECP charge. They're going to, uh, or they go over some impact study results. I'll, I'll leave the link below if you want to look at those. And then they have the implementation time frame, which is going to be 30 days within approval of this filing. So this is scheduled to be published tomorrow for public inspection. And once we get an approval back for this amendment, within 30 days of that approval, we should have an approval or a uh, implementation date set for the Fed Register. But again, to reiterate, no haircuts. So let's go.